In the vibrant Basque region of Spain, a family's fateful journey unfolded, leading to the tragic incident that would forever change the lives of many and leave behind a mystery that continues to grapple investigators to this day. Join us as we delve into the mysterious disappearance of one Pedro Martinez, a young boy who vanished without a trace, and explore the web of intrigue that shrouds this unusual case. Juan Pedro Martinez, a spirited 10 year old boy, was full of curiosity and possessed an insufferable thirst for adventure. His jet black hair, dark brown eyes and contagious smile made him the embodiment of youthful innocence. Born to Andres Martinez and Carmen Gomez, Juan was the apple of their eye. The year was 1986 when Juan's father Andres promised to take him on a road trip across Spain to the Basque region if he achieved good grades in school. Andres was a truck driver, so would regularly travel across Europe delivering goods and supplies wherever needed. Determined and driven, Juan eagerly accepted the challenge and invested his heart and soul into his studies, setting the stage for a journey that would forever alter the course of their lives. On that fateful day, June 25th, 1986, the Martinez family embarked on a journey that would end in tragedy. Juan's father Andres, accompanied by his wife Carmen and Juan, were tasked with transporting 20,000 litres of sulfuric acid from Cartagena to Bilbao, a city nestled in the heart of the Basque region. It is believed Andres persuaded his wife Carmen to accompany them on the trip so she could help keep a watchful eye over their son, Juan. Little did they know that this seemingly routine delivery would take an unexpected turn, shrouding their lives in mystery. Their journey spanned over eight hours covering more than 800 kilometres of treacherous mountain roads. As the family travelled through the infamous Somo Sierra mountain pass, an ominous air enveloped the vehicle. Tragedy was about to strike. The details of what transpired within the truck's cab that day remains unknown. But witnesses recall a scene of unease as the truck twisted through the narrow pass. Eyewitness accounts reveals a vehicle driving erratically, allegedly forcing other cars off the road. Despite the perilous twists and turns, the truck continued to accelerate, reaching a staggering speed of 90 miles per hour. At one harrowing moment, the truck's speed became too much for the treacherous curves, resulting in a devastating crash with an oncoming truck. The cab of the truck crumpled upon impact, tragically claiming the lives of Andres and Carmen instantaneously. The wreckage of the truck unleashed a terrifying chain of events. The sulfuric acid spilled, triggering small explosions and posed a serious risk to the surrounding area. Emergency responders swiftly arrived on the scene to contain the hazardous liquid and prevent the acid from contaminating nearby rivers and waterways. As chaos unfolded, investigators combed through the wreckage to retrieve the bodies of Andres and Carmen. At this moment in time, investigators were unaware that Juan had been travelling with them, since no third body was found in the cab of the truck. It wasn't until investigators contacted Carmen's mother later that day to inform her of her daughter's tragic death that they learned that Juan had been travelling with his parents. This revelation sent shockwaves through the investigation, igniting a desperate search for the missing boy. Their efforts intensified by the weight of the earlier oversight. Investigators returned to the crime scene to look for signs of Juan. 
while they found children's clothes and cassette tapes for kids in the back of the truck, confirming Juan had been travelling with them, his body was not found. Authorities lifted the truck to see if he was thrown off or pinned down somewhere in the wreckage. But again, no body was discovered. Upon realising the boy was not within the wreckage, the search for Juan commenced immediately. The investigation into Juan's disappearance was filled with many unanswered questions and little leads. Extensive search of the area yielded no signs of a missing boy, leaving the family and the community in a state of agonising uncertainty. The Martinez family's world was shattered as they grappled with the loss of Andres, Carmen and the mysterious disappearance of young Juan. Desperate to find answers, they pleaded for any information that could shed light on his whereabouts, clinging to hope amidst a fog of uncertainty. Witnesses began to come forward, shedding some light on the moments after the crash. Reports emerged of a white Nissan van near the wreckage, occupied by a tall man with a moustache and a woman described as Nordic looking. Eyewitnesses claimed they observed the couple removing a small package from the truck's cab before hastily departing the scene. However, the reliability of these accounts remain uncertain as the passage of time often distorts and embellishes details. As the investigation unfolded, puzzling details began to add layers of intrigue to the case. Forensic experts meticulously examined the truck's tachometer, which uncovered a series of 12 unexplained stops made during the journey. These stops, with the shortest last in a mere second, appeared to be unrelated to any known traffic patterns. These short and seamlessly inconspicuous halts intrigued investigators and fueled speculation that Andres may have been attempting to communicate with or avoid another vehicle on the road. Theories suggest a possible connection between these stops and a mysterious white Nissan van seen near the crash site. Investigators painstakingly followed up on every lead, conducted extensive searches in the area surrounding the crash site. Missing posters featuring Juan's face blanketed the region, hoping to bring forth any leads. Yet, as time passed, the search yielded no substantial evidence, leaving investigators grappling with the frustrating void of information. In the aftermath of Juan's disappearance, reported sightings trickled in, tantalising glimmers of hope for his anguished family, teasing the possibility of Juan's survival. While most of these sightings lacked concrete details linking them directly to Juan, one particular account stands out. In May of 1987, a blind woman of Iranian descent entered a driving school in Madrid, accompanied by a young boy resembling Juan. The boy's accent and behaviour caught the owner's attention, sparking a conversation that was abruptly shifted when the woman was asked about the boy's identity. The encounter left the owner convinced that he had come face to face with the missing boy. As the case gained notoriety, Various theories emerged, each attempting to unravel the enigma surrounding Juan's disappearance. One theory suggests that Juan perished in the crash, with his body dissolved by the sulfuric acid that was spilled from the truck. However, this theory was swiftly debunked, as the immediate search of wreckage would have revealed his remains before the acid's effect took hold. Authorities have said even if he was doused with sulfuric acid, it would take at least 24 hours for that acid to eat all of the soft tissue, and at least 5 days 
to break down the bones. Furthermore, the nails, hair and teeth would not have been dissolved in the acid, so there would have been at least some remnants of him among the wreckage if he was indeed in the cab at the time of the crash. Another theory takes a sinister turn, suggesting Juan may have been kidnapped by drug traffickers. The discovery of trace amounts of cocaine in the sulfuric acid tank, coupled with the sighting of the unidentified couple removing a package from the truck, fueled speculation of Andres' involvement in illicit activities. It is hypothesized that Juan may have seen something he wasn't meant to, which led to his abduction and subsequent demise. It is also possible that Juan was taken hostage. Truckers claim that trucks in the area are often hijacked by cartel operatives who threaten truckers to carry drugs over the border for them. This leads some to believe that Andres was forced to carry the drugs and that Juan was taken hostage to ensure that he would comply. However, again, the lack of concrete evidence linking Juan to these events cast doubt over these two theories. A third theory suggests that Juan may have suffered a head trauma during the accident, causing disorientation and memory loss. Supporters of this theory point to sightings of a boy resembling Juan in the years that followed the crash, suggesting he may have wandered away from the scene in a state of confusion. Despite the absence of witnesses seeing him leave, the chaotic aftermath of the crash could provide some plausible explanation for his disappearance. Within this theory, two plausible scenarios emerge. It is possible that Juan, disorientated and injured, wandered into the nearby wilderness, succumbing to his wounds or the unforgiving elements. The rugged terrain coupled with the possibility of burns from the sulfuric acid, paints a grim picture of his fate. Alternatively, some suggest that Juan, seeking relief from the burns caused by the sulfuric acid, ventured into the wilderness in search of water. Whether he met a tragic end in the wilderness, or was swept away by a river, the rugged terrain and the vastness of the area make the search for answers an ever more daunting task. Today, more than three decades after Juan Pedro Martinez vanished without a trace, his family continues to hold on to hope, tirelessly searching for answers that may bring closure to their anguished hearts. The disappearance of this young boy remains an enduring mystery. Thank you all for watching, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below and leave a like. If you are new to the channel or have not yet subscribed, please do so and remember to hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on the next unsolvable mystery. Until next time, goodbye.